The village square is today the scene of an unusual ceremony. A goat, a gift from the king, symbolizes a man murdered by his neighbor. Each participant in turn expresses his rancor by talking to the animal and to the spirits of the ancestors. The families of the victim and of the murderer are reconciled through the sacrificial killing and sharing of the royal goat. Kodok, the tribe's economic center, is a large village with a population of a few thousand on the banks of the Nile. Through it, transit all the goods bought and sold by the half a million Shiluk living in Sudan. The wall of a house bears the name of a French man, Jean-Baptiste Marchard, a captain on a colonizing mission in Sudan at the end of the 19th century. After 3,000 adventurous kilometers across the African continent, Marchand's Congo Nile expedition ended here in Kodok. Jean-Baptiste Marchand is remembered as an ally by the Shiluks, whom he freed from enslavement by an enemy tribe. For this, the Shiluk have always been grateful to the French officer. In this hut, old Onioti, aged 101, lives a quiet, peaceful life. <laughs> According to Onioti, his father knew the captain well. Before reminiscing, he prays to the god introduced to him by English missionaries a long time ago. Like most Shiluk, Onioti likes France. He's also quite defiant towards Khartoum's Islamic government, those he calls the Arabs. In 2002, the Christian tribes of the south were granted autonomy in a ceasefire after 30 years of war with the Muslims of the north. This gave Onioto and the rest of the Shiluk hope for the future. But Jean-Baptiste Marchand's story didn't stop in Kodok. It ended here, a couple of hours further south, in the village of Fashoda. Here, Marchand was instructed by the French authorities to withdraw without fighting and to allow the English troops, among whom was a young lieutenant named Churchill, to occupy the outpost. Fashoda was to be France's last defeat against Britain. <laughs> But Fashoda is also, and above all, a royal residence, where much can be learnt about King Kuang Dak. Otom, the housekeeper, knows a lot about the forbidden city. Every night, whether or not the king is in residence, the whole council pays tribute to the man they chose to represent and defend the tribe.
When the king is away, old Ercole is in charge of the maintenance and restoration of the royal huts. It's a major task, run to a very tight schedule. Everything must be completed before the next visit of the king and his 19 wives. <laughs> The Royal Army, a hundred or so men equipped by the Sudanese government, is also based at Fashoda. It has never taken sides in the conflict between the North and the South. All the soldiers are Shiluk, and their role is to ensure the safety of their king. The king of the Shiluk, an object of jealousy and intrigue? A journey through Shiluk territory reveals a kingdom of warm and friendly people. But what about its king? Today, many people have decided to pay their king a visit in his Yomo residence. Hundreds of people from the surrounding villages have come to pay tribute to their monarch. His Majesty Kuong Dark proves to be a very approachable man, keen to talk about his vision for his kingdom. In the first place, I am the first uh, educated king, the first educated king. My father was educated, but uh, primary education, okay? Now I am of secondary education. I have been working under the government for 19 years as a bank official. The banker has been king for a decade now and he's determined to make good of his reign. I accepted to come home not because I wanted uh, to become rich. If I wanted to be, become rich, I would have stayed in the bank. But I want to bring up my people. Number one is they have to build uh, or I have to build a school for them. As well as helping his people out of poverty, the king sees it as his mission to maintain the Shiluk traditions that have survived decades of civil war. Thanks to their king, the Shiluk can hope for better days. But a Shiluk king has to die in the full possession of his abilities, and the last monarch ended up ritually strangled by his wives. Kuong Dark has great ambitions for his people, but will he live long enough to see them through?